Well, let's pray. <clears throat> Father, just as we open your word this morning, Lord, we already sent your wonderful presence here, Lord. You've already been ministering to us, Lord, through communion, Lord. And uh, uh, Lord, as we've worshipped you, Lord, you've touched our hearts. And so, Father, as we open your word today, Lord, I know that you want to do a deep work in lives today. And so, Father, we just want to open our hearts. Lord, lay aside everything else, every other thought, everything else, Lord, and just listen to your heart, Lord, and as we search our own hearts, Lord, that you will speak to each and every one of us. So, Lord, we just humbly submit ourselves to you and say, have your way in our hearts and our lives, Lord, in Jesus' name. Bless this word, Lord, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We know our theme for the year is that the righteous will thrive like a green leaf. And uh, if you haven't heard that, well, welcome. It must be your first week because we've been talking about that this year. And I just want to share, uh, well, the title of my message is Beauty for Ashes, but I really want to share something personal and private, something that I want to share with you. This is... Uh, relates to a dream that actually I had when we went to our state conference. So this is back in Colac. I have shared some of these things with the Diggers Rest campus, but I've just been waiting in God for the right time to share this with you. And I wanted to share it with you today. So I had a dream and uh, not like Martin Luther. Uh, I, had, I had a dream, Martin Luther King, but I, we all got a dream in God, but I had an actual real dream. Now, this is not a pizza dream. We all have pizza dreams. Have you had a pizza dream? Too much pizza, you have some stupid dream where you're running up a tree and some silly thing happening. This is well, not a pizza dream. This is a, a dream from the Lord. And uh, good to know the difference. Some people think, oh, I had a dream last night. Now that you had a pizza dream, it's okay. That wasn't from the Lord. You need to know what the difference is between a, a dream where God gives you a dream and it's actually very, very clear and you remember it very clearly when, when God gives you a dream. So I want to share a dream, a little bit of context so that you'll understand that. Uh, I grew up with a very happy family, wonderful parents and, uh, you know, I, I became a Christian. I got born again when I was eight, was when I was baptised in water, I got filled with the Spirit and followed the Lord my whole life and wonderful parents. But when I was 21 years of age, my father uh, left the family home. And obviously at that time, that was a, a difficult time uh, as a family and certainly for my mother, it was a difficult time. Uh, and so I'm just giving you that context for this dream that I'm about to share with you. Now, I've got a good relationship with my father and um, we got on well. And, uh, but I just want to share, to, but you need to know that little bit of background uh, so that you'll understand this dream. Anyway, I'll tell you the dream. Now, you know, 44 gallon drums. Everyone knows the 44 gallon drums, but you know the metal ones, but you know those plastic ones, the blue plastic ones, those blue plastic drums? Have you seen those? Quite often they have chemicals or stuff in blue drums. So I think you've all got a mental picture of that. Well, I want to share the stream anyway. So as I said, this was at when we had the um, state conference in Colac. This was actually on the last night of the conference I had this stream. Anyway, in the stream, I'm just standing there and I walk up and there's one of those uh, blue barrels there in front of me. And as I walked up to this blue barrel and I looked down in this bar, this is the hurt from your father. Now immediately I'm looking there and I'm thinking, I look down, I don't know whether you, you know that when, when you've had a fire, when, when there's been a fire and there's ash forms down the bottom, you've seen in the ash forming down the bottom, but then maybe that's been wet, whether you've hosed it down or rain's come upon it. And so when you've got ash down the bottom, and that ash has been wet. It sort of becomes like, it wasn't a lot, just a little bit down the side. And it was sort of like that little black sludgy sort of, you know what I mean when you've seen wet ash? I'm sure you've all seen wet ash down the bottom of it. And I thought in this dream, so my immediate reaction was, well, this is great. You know, this is the hurt. Hurt's all gone, dealt with it, all gone. Praise God, this is good. But down the bottom, there was just a little bit of sludgy ash there. And uh, when I woke up, I immediately Lord, brought it to the Lord and prayed about it. And then the Lord laid upon me, pressed upon me. And, and you think we've already sung about it today, about beauty for ashes. And because uh, the remarkable thing about that dream is in the dream when I saw this uh, ash in it, I mentioned <laughs> in the dream, when I saw the sludge there, um, I immediately 
I thought I had to do something about it. So I, I got a, I got sort of tipped it on its side and I scraped out um, the ash and then I put it back. And then when I put it back, I saw these plants and things beginning to grow within this barrel. And again, as I said, when I woke up and I reflected upon that beauty for ashes, because what was some ashes down the bottom, it was an empty barrel. I thought, this is all cool. It's all dealt with. It's all gone. Praise God, empty. But uh, hang on, there was some ashes down the bottom. And when I got those ashes out, that's when this barrel, which had just been an empty barrel, actually filled up with some beautiful plants began to come. Now I'm sharing you that that's a very personal, very private thing. But I believe that God wants to do a work for all of us. I believe there's something in that. And certainly for us that are here today, that you're listening or you're watching this online, uh, that maybe you're someone that you think your barrel was empty, but maybe there's some ashes down the bottom and God wants to do something today. I want to read the, uh, the passage of Scripture, which is in Isaiah 61, the first three verses of that, uh, which is the passage which probably all know about beauty for ashes. We've sung about beauty for ashes, but I believe God wants to do something. God obviously had to do something in me. I, I thought, I'm good. I've got an empty barrel all dealt with, but a little bit of ash there. Maybe some of you that are sitting here today or those that are watching online think, oh, my barrel, it's good, it's done, it's empty, but maybe there's a little bit of ash that you might need to deal with today. So I'm reading from Isaiah chapter 61, verses 1 to 3. And this is the passage which Jesus actually read in Luke chapter 4 when Jesus had gone through the uh, temptation in the wilderness. Jesus comes back, he goes into the synagogue, he goes there, he grabs that scroll of Isaiah, scrolls all the way through the scroll, and it wasn't flipping on his phone. He's just got to scroll it through, finds that particular passage, and then he reads that. Although he only reads, he finishes at one point. I'll tell you where Jesus finishes it. We're going to read the whole passage from Isaiah chapter 61, verses 1 to 3. And this is what the passage says. It says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom for the captives, and to release from darkness the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favour. Now that's what Jesus stopped reading there when he was reading in the synagogue. That's as far as Jesus read down and then just scrolled it up and they sat down and they're going, wow. And that's when Jesus said, today, this has been fulfilled in your presence. But we'll read a little bit further on. So to proclaim the year of the Lord's favour in verse 2, and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to bestow on them the crown of beauty instead of ashes, the oil of joy instead of mourning, and a garment of praise instead of a spirit of despair. They will be called oaks of righteousness, a planting of the Lord for the display of his splendor. What a wonderful, wonderful promise. And so this is the Lord, obviously Isaiah prophesying, speaking prophetically about Jesus. And then Jesus affirms that. He reads that in the synagogue and said, hey guys, this is about me. But also I believe this is about us because he's anointed each and every one of us. The spirit of the Lord is upon you. He's upon me, he's on our hearts, he's upon us. And he's done that for a purpose. That God has put his spirit upon each and every one of us. And the purpose of that is that we might touch others with the good news of Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. Amen. Some of you might look at your own life and think, uh, well, our theme is Thrive. And uh, maybe you think, well, it's been a good theme and I like the theme, sounds pretty cool, but maybe you're not thriving. Well, maybe, maybe you have a little bit of ash that God wants you to deal with, not tomorrow, but today. He wants you to deal with that. But Jesus was anointed with a, for a purpose, and that was to bring the good news. We also were anointed for the purpose of bringing the good news. How effective are you in doing that? How effective are you in reaching other people and touching other people and sharing the love of God. Because maybe some of you just haven't got ash. Maybe you've got a full barrel load of stuff that you need to deal with perhaps today. And maybe that could be blocking some of the things that God wants to do. 
But it's to bring good news. Jesus said to pro- proclaim good news. Did you know there's such a thing as euphobia? Have you ever heard of euphobia? Euphobia, you've heard of that? You know what it is? It's the fear of good news. The fear of good news. People that are terrified of getting good news. You think, is that such a thing? It is actually such a thing. It's a real fear that some people have where they're terrified to get good news. And you know what the cure to euphobia is for people that are terrified of getting good news? You give them good news. That's the only answer to it. You got to give them good news. You got to keep giving them good news. You give them good news, good news, good news. And eventually they get over the euphobia, their fear of good news. And so there's good news. We need to bring the good news. Even if people are scared of it, they don't want to hear the good news. It's the only treatment for euphobia is to give the good news. And certainly that was the heart of the Lord that he was to touch others and certainly the heart that he wants us to do and to be effective touching the lives of people. And 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 4 says, He comforts us in all our troubles so that we can comfort others. When they are troubled, we will be able to give them the same comfort that God has given us. And that's the beauty of the things of God in our lives, that what God has poured into us life, what He's touched our lives, it gives us the ability and the capacity to help others as they go through struggles and situations in their life. And as you're going through struggles and situations in your own life, the Lord will bring you through, He will but give you then the capacity to help others that are going through their struggles in life, to give them comfort and then to help them. But this beautiful passage in Isaiah 61. And so first of all, Jesus talks about the anointing that's upon him and it's to proclaim good news. You have an anointing upon you and that also is to proclaim good news with what God has given you, what God has done in your life that you may also then do and touch other people and encourage them in the things of God. But he makes this incredible proclamation. It's, it's a, he says, this is a new day, basically, he's saying. Now, we had a theme of, of, of a new day, and he's basically making such a proclamation. It's a time of favour. And we all want to walk in the blessing and favour of God. We know that there's challenges in this life. We know there's all these things that we've got to walk through, go through. But at the end of the day, we have God's favour and God's blessing upon our life. And the Lord makes this proclamation. He's anointed me to proclaim. It's a proclaim proclamation from the King. Now we have a, a new King now. Uh, Queen Elizabeth, who was just a a wonderful, godly woman who loved the Lord and served the Lord faithfully in what God had called her to do. But we now have a king and the king can make proclamations. And I think he's about to make one where he uh, removes some of his children from some of their privileges and elevates his sister Margaret from what I've been reading and hearing. And they can make proclamations. They have the the capacity to to proclaim. Well, here the King of Kings is making a proclamation and he's proclaiming favour, a time of favour. Now we've experienced the favour of our Lord Jesus Christ of God when we came into his kingdom because of the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross. But the favour and blessing of God is from on our lives. And so he's anointed me to said to proclaim uh, good news for the poor, this day of favour, but also a day of vengeance of our God. It's interesting when Jesus was reading that in the temple, in the synagogue, he didn't actually read that line. He stopped at favour, didn't talk about vengeance. But ultimately, all sin was dealt with on the cross. Jesus was to deal with that. And ultimately, uh, we need to come to Christ. We need to come to him or otherwise we do stand under the wrath of God. But Jesus' heart and God's heart is that we stand under his favour and blessing and therefore wants us to come to Christ and surrender our heart to Christ. But he deals with our enemies too. We're talking about an awesome God today, a powerful God. Bring those who mourn, these beautiful exchanges that are in this passage. Comfort to all who mourn. Exchange brokenness and sin for life. What a wonderful thing. Our brokenness, our shame, your discouragement, whatever it is, the Lord will take all of that and he'll give it something beautiful in exchange. What a wonderful thing. It talks about those who mourn in Zion. And when it talks about mourning here, it's actually a very deep word about mourning. It's mourning over calamity. It's not mourning because you've got a flat tire. Oh, it's flat tire, pain in the neck. This is a deep, heartfelt mourning 
over calamity. And some of you have been through some calamitous situations in your life. And uh, I'm sure we all have different levels. Some people I know have been through so many calamities. I praise God that they're standing at all. But we can, we can grieve over things and, and, and as we go through things and, uh, we, you know, the Lord comforts us, but we also got to make sure that when in that process that we do make sure our barrel is completely empty too, that don't leave any ash, any residual down the bottom because that will work against you in your walk and work against you in your life. Mourning, he says, that for those who are mourn, he's going to bring comfort and there's a comfort that only God can bring. People can get around you, people can support you, people can encourage you, but there's a comfort that only God will bring and it's a deep comfort. And to those deepest places of your heart, the deepest residual places, the places you think everything is cool, everything's fine, but in all of those places, God wants to touch and bring His life and bring His comfort into your heart and into your life. And maybe there's some of you are mourning now Maybe some of you have got some grief that's buried deep down inside your heart that you didn't even realise was there. Well, the Lord can release that even this day. So he talks about this wonderful exchange. Comfort those who mourn to provide for those who grieve in Zion, that grief, and, and take away the mourning and the, all of the sadness, all of those things, and to provide for them and those that are needing, God will meet those needs, to bestow upon them the crown of beauty instead of ashes. Beauty instead of ashes. And that's what the Lord showed me in the stream, beauty instead of ashes. And I said, well, we've just still got a lot of ashes clogging up your life. That's going to stop the beauty of the Lord coming forth. And as I said, this barrel to me, oh, Praise God, yeah, I've dealt with that. And I honestly thought I'd, I'd dealt with everything for things that had happened many, many, many years ago. And, you know, God had worked in my heart and wonderful things and restoration and all those beautiful things, but there was some ash I didn't know was there. And maybe you got some ash today. And he wants to take that ash and it says beauty for ashes. And when it talks about beauty for ashes, it says it's a crown of beauty a crown of beauty. And it's a wonderful, wonderful picture of that. It's like a headdress or like a turban for the, the, for the man who was the bridegroom as he was getting uh, to be married to have this incredible turban, elegant turban on his head and the, and the bride, this incredible headdress that she would wear and this beautiful crown that was given upon their life. We read a little bit further in Isaiah 61 and Went down to verse 10. I'll just quickly read that. It says this. So this is the same passage, but we'll jump down to verse 10. And it says, I am overwhelmed with joy in the Lord my God, for he has dressed me with the clothing of salvation and draped me in the robe of righteousness. And we know we are covered by that right, clothed in Christ, the righteousness that we have in Jesus Christ. I'm overwhelmed with joy in my Lord, my God, for He has dressed me with the clothing of salvation and draped me in a robe of righteousness, which we have in Jesus Christ. I'm like a bridegroom dressed for His wedding or a bride with her jewels, the beauty of that and the joy of your wedding day. Now, for those who've been married and the, 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 the joy of that day is a wonderful, precious time, a wonderful time. I remember my wedding day and the joy of that. I will never forget that day, very precious day and uh, wonderful, wonderful joy on that time. And, uh, you know, they used to say about smiling. Oh, look, if someone says to me, smile in front of a camera, honestly, I'm not a good smiler. If you make me smile, I don't know what you're going to get. Um, um, and so I was worried about my wedding day because, you know, you have to smile for hours and hours of photos and this one with grandma and then grandma's budgie and then grandma's dog and, every, every, you know, so many different photos you have to take and smile, smile, smile. I was worried about my smile ability because if people smile on demand, I'm not, you know, ee, like the cheesy grin, I'm not really good at doing that kind of thing. Um, but I was actually smiling. I smiled the whole day. Even the photos think, wow, this is like eight hours later, this photo, and I'm smiling because it's a real joy. It's not a smile for the camera. Gee, 
tears type smile, but a real joy. And, and that wonderful joy, that's part of thriving. It's carrying that joy in our heart, the joy of that special time. And for us, if you haven't been married, that's fine, but you've been married in the sense that you were joined to your Lord in Him. And, and the Bible says about marriage is just a, as a mystery. It's like Christ and His church. And, and for us, we're joined uh, with our Lord. And the joy of that, joy of the moment when you first gave your life to Christ, when you first realised you don't have to die in your sin and your shame and your weakness and your failure, that you get born again, you get a whole new life, a whole new start and the wonder and the glory of being loved of God, how awesome that is, the joy of that special moment. Well, he wants us to live in that moment, to live in that moment. You know, some of us, we, uh, you know, the wedding day is over and then maybe you put on, smile for the camera, you put on a cheesy smile. And maybe some of us, even when we come here to worship the Lord, maybe some uh, putting on that little cheesy smile, it's not really something that's happening from within your heart. Well, God wants to release you from that today, the joy that He crowns us, like the joy of the wedding day, a joyful morning. What a wonderful exchange where there's been grief or mourning or a sense of loss, then God will restore that. What a wonderful, wonderful promise of Him that He would restore that joy for mourning, to bestow upon them a crown of beauty instead of ashes, the oil of joy instead of mourning. The oil, of course, which is the symbol of the Holy Spirit. The oil of joy instead of mourning and the garment of praise instead of the spirit of despair. And despairing is a horrible thing if people are despairing of their lives, despairing of their circumstances. It's, it's a horrible, horrible thing when you see people that are caught up in despair without hope. And I think this is the end. And unfortunately, some people, they make the wrong choice because they don't understand about the life that we can have in Jesus Christ. And this garment of praise, to be wrapped in praise, what a wonderful thing it is to be clothed in praise, to be wrapped in praise. And, uh, and we are clothed in Christ. We can truly thrive because of Jesus Christ. And there's a wonderful promise for each and every one of us. He says, this is, and this is about you. So this is the Lord talking about you. He wants to bestow upon them a crown of beauty instead of ashes. Get rid of your ashes today. You've got some ashes and if you look carefully, you might find somewhere you don't expect to find them. Get rid of your ashes to, to bestow upon them a crown of beauty instead of ashes, the oil of joy instead of mourning, and a garment of praise instead of the spirit of despair. And this beautiful promise to you, this is about you and our context, our theme is thriving. It says, they will be called oaks of righteousness a planting for the Lord, for the display of His splendour. God wants to display His splendour through your life and through my life. He wants people to look at you. And when they're at work and when they're at school and wherever they are, they see there's something about them. There's something about them. They're, they're displaying the splendour of God. And uh, the beautiful word where it talks about oaks, these great oaks, the word there just means strong, to be strong to stand strong, whatever comes your way. So the wonderful thing about the oak tree is the ability to renew itself. The, the, these, these oaks that it's talking about, these great oaks, uh, you can cut it down and you can chop it down. You can cut it all the way, even down to the stump. And yet out of that, life will still come. It'll grow, it'll still come. And maybe you felt that you've been cut down to the stump. You felt like oh, I've been hacked off the, what was strong and beautiful and splendor, wonderful and glorious. Maybe it's been cut down, but it has the ability to renew itself. A wonderful, wonderful thing. They live a very long time, these oaks. In fact, there's an oak called the Oak of Abraham. It's 4,170 years old. And uh, it's called the Oak of Abraham or another name, it's called the Oak of Mamre, where the angels actually visited Abraham and they told Sarah that, that she's going to be pregnant. That was under the oak tree. That tree was still alive 4,170 years later. However, in 2019, after living all that long from the time of Abraham, 4,170 plus years of been standing there, 2019, the thing just fell apart and fell to the ground. However, there's a little seed, little, little shoot that's come up. 
And so now in Israel, there's a whole trust that they're all devoted together uh, to make sure that that little shoot grows strong and it's protected and all the security around this little shoot that's come out. And, and that it has this incredible resilience. And there's that resilience that God has put upon your heart too. That even if you feel like you've been cut down to the ground, God will bring a life that you can thrive. And because you are that oak, that's God's promise to you. That whatever you go through, that you will stand and be planted for His glory. And another verse in the same passage of Isaiah 61 and verse 11, it says this. For as the soil makes the sprout come up and the garden causes seeds to grow, so the sovereign Lord will make righteousness and praise spring up before all nations. What a wonderful promise that is, that we're going to stand strong. But as the soil makes the sprout come up and the garden causes seeds to grow, so the sovereign Lord will make righteousness and praise spring up before all nations. So what a wonderful, wonderful promise that is. Amen? Amen. What a wonderful promise before all nations. And God's going to want us to do that in our lives and through our lives. And so I, I want to pray for some of us today. I want to take some time to pray. Probably could pray for all of us. As I said, I took a dream for the Lord to show me something in my own heart and my own life. And if you had to ask me, I would have said, no, dealt with a long time ago, no problems, no issue, empty barrel, but, oh, a little bit of ash down the bottom. And maybe you, you like that. You said, oh, yeah, I dealt with that many years ago. I'm fine. Yep, no worries. It's all dealt with. Everything's fine. Moving on. But maybe the reality is that you're holding on to some ash in your life. And that may be stopping you right now from thriving in all that God has for you. So I'm going to take a little moment where I want you to sit in your seats and we're going to speak quietly. Just want you to search your own heart. I want the Holy Spirit to speak to you and show you in your own heart. Some of you might have a barrel and, and by the grace of God, well, yeah, no, there's not even any ash there. Some of you might say, yeah, actually there is some ash. I thought I dealt with that, but the reality is there's some ash there. But I want to swap that now for the beauty that the Lord wants to bring in my heart and in my life. Some of you might look and say, and I don't just have ash. I've come here with a barrel that is so full and full of stuff that, you know, you talk about thriving. Well, man, I'm just clogged up with all of this stuff in my life. All this shame, failure, heartache, heartbreak, mourning, grief, where you feel like you had the ground cut neath, like stood all that time and it's fallen to the ground. And maybe you're feeling like I've actually got a full barrel today. Whether your barrel is full or whether you've got some sludge here. If you don't know Jesus Christ, can I tell you that your barrel is not only full, your barrel is overflowing. If you don't know Jesus Christ, it's full of a whole lot of junk that you need to deal with, a whole lot of stuff. And the only way to deal with that is to give your life to Jesus Christ and let Him come and, and clean out your heart, clean out the barrel, get rid of all the sin and junk and shame and get rid of that and fill you with the beauty of His holiness and His presence. If you haven't made that exchange, encourage you to do that. But if you've given your life to Christ and think, uh, Lord, you're right, there's something. As I said, if you had to ask me, I would have said, no problems. Beautiful. And the Lord had to show me because I couldn't see. We've all got stuff in our life that we can't see. Every one of us have things that we can't see. And it takes sometimes the finger of God, and the Holy Spirit, just to say, hey, there's that place. There's something there I want you to deal with. And I'm going to pray for us. I want you to sit quietly. I'm going to pray. I want us to sit quietly just for a couple of moments and search your heart. And maybe the Holy Spirit is going to say, yep, a bit of ash there. Oh, there's actually a barrel there. And I want to, don't want to deal with that today. So let me pray. Father, just as we, we come before you now, Lord, we just thank you, Lord, for this beautiful passage, Lord. And uh, Lord, that was fulfilled in Jesus Christ. So we thank you, Lord, life. Everything is fulfilled in you, Lord. You fill and fulfill all things, all promises. We do thank you, Lord, for the wonderful promises of being strong, Lord. Lord, even if they try to cut us down, Lord, that we will grow and life will come, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that, Lord, that you take away grief and mourning and sorrow, Lord, and heartbreak. And Lord, that you bring beauty and joy, the wonderful joy that you bring, Lord. And so, Father, I pray, Lord, as we just take a moment, 
Holy Spirit, that you will help us each to search our own hearts. Lord, we, no one can tell us it's up to you or what, whatever. Lord, it's each and every one to look in our own heart. And so, Lord, as we just take a moment now, Holy Spirit, I pray, Lord, that you'll just reveal areas, Lord, where maybe, maybe there's ash, maybe there's a whole lot of junk, a whole full barrel of hurt and, and heartache and all the disappointments and all of those things, Father, Lord, if you put your hand on those things now. So let's, let's let the Lord do that. And then I want us to bring it to him. But let's just take that moment just to seek him now, just in your own heart. Don't be looking at your watch. Don't be looking at anyone else. Just, just take a moment just to search your own heart quietly now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Search your hearts, Lord. Search your hearts, Holy Spirit. Search your hearts. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. The Holy Spirit has just put something in your heart and you know, yeah, I've got to, I've got to empty that out. I've got to get rid of that. I don't want you to come out of your seat. I just want you to stand. I don't want anyone looking around. And uh, thank you for all those who are honest enough to acknowledge their own hearts this day. So if that's you, you said, yes, there's some ash there. Maybe I thought it was empty, but yeah, there's still some there. I want you to stand. If you're aware, now look, I'm carrying a whole barrel load of stuff. Just want you to stand where you are. Everyone else, keep your eyes closed. It's none of your business. It's between them and God, nothing to do with you. But let's just stand before the Lord now. So just quietly stand in your place. Don't have to come out the front. Just stand. The Lord's showing you some things in your own heart that he wants to deal with. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. I said, yeah, just quietly stand up if that's you. To be honest, it's probably all of us. <laughs> Some are more honest than others. But, but if the Holy Spirit particularly has put something in your heart, just stand. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Lord, I just, uh, first of all, thank you, Lord, for the courage of those, Lord, who listen to you, Lord, and are able to stand, Lord, and acknowledge, yeah, they're still carrying some things, some hurts, or whatever it is, failures, disappointments, letdowns, Lord, whatever it is, Father, Lord, as people stand now in your holy presence, Lord, I pray, Lord, by your Spirit, Lord, whether the barrel is full or if it's just a bit of ash down the bottom, whatever it is, Lord, I pray now by your Holy Spirit, Lord, that you will come and touch each and every one, Father, that is standing here today. Lord, just you pour your Spirit upon them, Lord, and I just see that just being cleaned out, Lord, just emptied out, Father. Uh, Lord, that's just taking up space, uh, even though it might not seem to be there, Lord, seem to be much. Lord, I pray even now in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, that you just release these things in Jesus' name, Lord, that we'll see that ash taken out, Lord, or if it's other stuff, Lord, just to be removed, the hurt, the pain, the heartache, the disappointment, the grief, Lord. 
Lord, let, let your joy come upon that, Father. Lord, let your love be poured upon that place, Lord, where there's been hurt, Lord. Just bring healing and restoration, Lord, and forgiveness, Lord, and renewal. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, Holy Spirit, just pour your life now and your love upon each one. Touch each of these ones in Jesus' name, Father. And Lord, I thank you, Lord, that you clear out all ash in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord. And Father, I thank you, Lord, that you honour those that honour you. And Lord, we want to be real, Lord. We don't want to play games, Lord, and say, yeah, I'm all right, Jack, Lord, when we know in our own hearts. So Lord, we just come to you. We thank you, Lord, that you're faithful, Lord, that you love us, Father. And Lord, as you remove that ash, Lord, or that other stuff, the hurt, the heartache, all of the things, and Lord, we just speak now, Lord, for beauty to come, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, the beauty of your presence, Lord, that those places, Lord, that maybe had hurt and loss and whatever it was, Father, Lord, that you're just beginning to fill that now by your Spirit. Fill those places, Lord. Let your love invade those places, Lord, as you clean out all the stuff. And Lord, let love and beauty and peace and the presence come. And Lord, let your life of your Spirit just thrive, Lord, Lord, for each one, Lord. Because, Lord, you called us to be those strong oaks, Father. And so, Lord, we just receive that now in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, for those that are sitting, Lord, and they don't want to stand for some reason, Lord, whether it's pride or indifference or whatever it is, Lord, I pray that you touch them too and pour your love upon them, Father. Lord, for those who aren't aware of anything, Lord, they've searched their heart, Lord, and they say, Lord, I, nothing's coming up, Lord, and I pray that you bless them, Lord, and you love them, Father, Lord, as they've honestly sought before you, Lord, and, and Lord, they can't sense that, Lord, I pray you bless them too, Father, for loving you, Lord, and serving you, and for each one, Lord, wherever, wherever our heart this day, Lord, we just want to honour you, Lord, and we thank you, Lord, that you love us, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that you never condemn us, but Lord, you set us free, and Lord, that you bring beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, Lord. We thank you, Lord, and that we can stand, Lord, as those trees of righteousness, Lord, and let us display your glory and your splendour, Lord, this day and forevermore, Lord. We pray this now in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen. Amen. Let's